So getting started with that, I think we uh, can pass this over to Josh, uh, who will give you guys a look at, at I, I, I don't know how many of you have seen Men Platform. We've got quite a few customers adopting it now, but Josh is going to walk you through uh, the various technologies and how it all fits together here. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Uh, just verify I'm sharing my Men Platform screen. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it just fine. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So really excited about the Min platform, uh, much more modern UI, much more dynamic. Um, as a user who demos this on a daily basis, really excited to have this, this new Min platform UI. Um, quickly showing the ability to link back to the legacy SCA platform. So from that gear icon in the upper right, uh, we can quickly shift back over into the legacy SCA UI. And then a path is available from the legacy SCA UI into the min platform. So easily able to switch back and forth. One of the main enhancements is the ability to see all of the min solutions um, within a single user interface. So notice here at the top, um, I can look at my SCA, my set, uh, software composition analysis, all of my open source dependencies and their vulnerability and licensing information. I can look at our code, which is our static analysis scans. And then I can also look at our containers view. So anytime we run a scan of a container image, um, we'll populate that here within the min platform UI. One question that came in um, for this webinar was what additional steps are needed to configure additional products within our pipelines? So one thing to point out is for the static analysis and the container images, we will need to use the min CLI. Um, the SCA data is being pulled from both the legacy UI as well as here within the min platform. Um, but for the static analysis and the container image scannings, um, we will need to implement the min CLI within your pipeline. So having these all within the same UI, um, depending on what I'm currently interested in, I can turn off. Uh, maybe I only care about vulnerabilities um, from my open source libraries. I don't care about my custom code. So I can switch and just turn off the code tab. Um, we also have the ability to assign labels to applications. So maybe currently I'm only focused on my external facing applications and I just want to see those findings and severities and license information for my external facing applications. So easily able to slice and dice the data to whatever I'm currently interested in. Here within the dashboard, um, I can mouse over the different bar charts and see, in this case, my medium severity findings. I can see which ones are coming from my SCA scans, my static analysis scans, or my container image scans. A listing across my organization of all my remediations or suppressions. We have our trend bar here showing findings, remediations, and suppressions as well. And we can easily change that to be whatever time frame we want to uh, run the report on. And then finally, moving into the applications or projects, our top 10 high-risk applications by findings. So opening up a particular application here, I can start here on the uh, SCA side. If I click on dependencies, a really nice enhancement here in the min platform is the root libraries view. So with this, I'm seeing an aggregated list of all the vulnerabilities for my top level or root libraries. For example, if I click into one of these, look at the impact analysis screen, I can see that my root library, the Spring Boot Starter Validation 3.1.0, has these aggregated vulnerabilities, and those are comprised of these transitive vulnerabilities, transitive libraries and their associated vulnerabilities. The libraries tab is very similar to the, um, uh, the libraries view within the legacy SUI, SCA UI. So I can see a listing of all the vulnerable libraries. I can see their reachable status. Um, also, for, there was a question around exploit metrics. So if I come into the findings, 
and I search for an exploit is available. Whenever I drill into the CVE and look at the details, I can see that exploit maturity high and my EPSS score is really high. So MIND is alerting you and helping you with prioritization on, in this case, it's reachable and it has the exploit available. So we would certainly want to focus on that one right away. One thing to point out there is notice um, on the screen itself, I can quickly just decide what I'm currently interested in and the screen automatically repaints. So I'm not having to run a project, run a report, apply a filter and rerun the report, but rather dynamically the screen is showing me exactly what I'm currently interested in. And then at any point I can export that out to a CSV file. We also have some reports available. I'll show that in just a second. So that's SCA moving on to static analysis. So I can look at my code section here. And if I drill into a particular finding, MIND is going to provide the um, data flow analysis for, in this case, a SQL injection. Um, there was a question around what data is pulled um, and presented up into the MIND cloud. So by default, we take a 10 line source code snippet um, to help the remediator see exactly where the tainted input is coming in and how it's flowing through the application until it finally syncs up. Um, that is configurable, you can turn that off, but having that source code snippet certainly helps them see how the weakness is moving through the application. In addition to the data flow analysis, we provide a, a CWE description and some links to um, the OWASP, in this case for a SQL injection. We have a partnership with Secure Code Warrior, so you can give your developers more advanced training on specifically how to prevent, in this case, SQL injection from being brought into their applications. And then at any point, we can suppress um, findings here at the bottom, as well as create JIRA tickets for this particular finding. So we've talked about SCA, we've talked about SAS. I also wanted to show the containers so whenever we look at the container image results, I can see the vulnerabilities. I can see whether it's reachable from the container's entry point. We have an integration available with Sysdig. So if you happen to use Sysdig for your container monitoring, um, we can show whether that particular package is um, actively running within your Kubernetes cluster. And then the normal vulnerability information, EPSS score, um, CVSS score to help you with prioritization. Finally here, I'll talk about the SBOM. So software bill of materials, um, where we can see a listing of all the open source libraries that are present, their associated licensing and a license risk score. Um, so you could then create a report from here or we also have the ability to show a number of different reports such as um, SBOM reports, code compliance, attribution reports. Um, those are easily created here and they're broken down by the different solutions. So static analysis, SCA or container scans. The last thing I wanted to point out here was our new workflow capabilities within the MIN platform. So we come into the create workflow. You can see we can set up a triggering event from a static analysis scan, a container image scan, or a SCA scan, or if we create a new app or project. From here, we can decide our scope whether we want to scope this across the entire org or into a particular application or project or down to the labels that we talked about earlier. And then one unique feature here within the MEN platform is the ability to group our event conditions. So the ability to say, um, I'll go up to a, let's do an SCA one. And if it goes over to Maybe I want to care if it's uh, a critical level severity, 
and I can group it to also say if it's reachable or not. So this is a differentiator between the workflow engine here versus the policy engine that was in the legacy SCA, SCA UI is the ability to do uh, event conditions and group those together to where if it has an if then else structure to it versus just hitting the first policy match. And then from here, we can create JIRA tickets, we can assign labels, send emails, or create policy violations. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Robert.